Welcome to Chatterbox Quilts. I'm Kim Jamison Hurst and today I'm taking a look at a book that has lots of different free motion quilting motifs in it and shows you how to combine those to create even more designs. The book I'm looking at today is called Free Motion Combinations Unlimited Quilting Designs and it's by Christina Camelli. Now I've previously done a review on at least one of her books so check up above or in the description below because I'll put a link to that book review too. I really love Christina's uh, aesthetic, the motif she comes up with, and I would say probably more like beginner to intermediate quilt uh, level as far as free motion quilting. And if you're in that area of free motion quilting, you'll find her books really helpful. Now, this is not a learn how to free motion quilt book, okay? This is more like a reference guide of different motifs, as I mentioned, and how to put them together. So if you're looking for a book on how to free motion quilt, this isn't it, but one of her other books certainly is, and you will find a list of different books that Christina offers below in the description, so you can check those out. So let's take a look at what she has in this particular book. So she breaks these down into different categories, and that's really helpful. So first she starts off with simple combinations, okay? So she will show you all these different combinations. She shows you what pages they're on, so you can just flip right to them if you would like. That's really helpful. I also like the fact that, and you'll see this as we get further into the book, that she shows you um, the motif stitched out, and she'll also have it drawn out so you can see how to create it, but you'll also see what it looks like on, you know, real fabric or a photo of real fabric. Then she has these, what she calls fancy combinations. So these are a little more uh, elegant, I would say. Um, you know, there's different combinations are suited for different types of quilts. So she's kind of broken them into these different categories. And then, as I mentioned, she does have the designs drawn out. So for example, she will show you different types of um, parts of the motifs, if you will. So she's got the leaves here, for example. So all different types of leaves. And what's interesting with these, I thought, is that she shows you, you know, you can do a, a simple leaf, just, you know, like a leaf like this up, and then you can echo it inside, but you can ramp it up a little bit by adding, you know, some pebbles inside it, or some, you know, kind of like half circles inside, or a little swirl, that type of thing. So you can take something that's simple and add a little more to it and make it look a little bit more complicated, but it's really not much more difficult to do. So that's what I really like about how she teaches free motion quilting and the design she uses. Here's another example with some pebbles. Again, simple pebble or a circle if you want to just do it, you know, by itself or even a loop. You can include different motifs inside that gives just a little more interest, more texture to that design. She has some uh, spirals and swirls, same idea that she's showing you what you can do with them. So just on their own, this gives you ideas of what you can do with a simple motif. If that's all you wanted to do is pebbles, maybe you want to throw in some designs like this in some of them, design like that in some, leave some open without anything in them. It just draws the eye, gives more interest to the quilt, and as I mentioned, more texture. She also has some other designs, climbing designs, so like leaves, if you will. These are appropriate for like nature quilts. Barnacles, I thought that was kind of funny that she calls these barnacles because they grow off a base. She says like a barnacle grows on something. Um, and these are really cute. So you can have, you know, one that you're going to see and one that's kind of partially hidden behind. But again, you're putting all these different little motifs inside or in this case, outside. I really like this design. I think that's really cute, actually. Quite like that. And some more ideas. So there's no shortage of ideas just in the first few pages of this book, what you can do with simple designs. I really like this idea too. So if you have these channels, if you're doing wavy lines across your quilt, um, you could fill those in. And again, you don't have to fill every one of them in. It's actually more effective if you fill, say, every other one or just the odd one in. That is really more effective than doing it on every single one. And then she gets into some all over design. So you can see the spirals here, okay? These are going along, building across your quilt. And she shows you how to stitch them. You've got arrows here, um, or different colors to indicate how you're going to create that design. And meandering, of course, most of us know meandering. This one's a little different because you've got the sharp points coming back and forth. But she'll tell you how to, uh, you know, construct these or, you know, some different tips on how to do them effectively. And that's really helpful. The next thing she gets into is essential skills. So she's talking about how to actually stitch these, you know, different considerations as you do that. So for example, echoing, okay? So that gives you more texture and you can echo pretty much any design. And typically you'll echo it three times, like in odd numbers rather than just twice. You could do just twice, I suppose, but three seems to be what most people will do. Um, you could do more than that if you wanted to, but three usually gives you enough. And don't forget that build your design out quite a bit too. So this is a really good way to 
cover your quilt quickly if you're echoing around design, especially if your initial design is a good size. She also talks about following along a prior stitching path, okay? So that's something that you can see she's done here. It doesn't have to be exact, but it gives that repetition um, across your quilt, which is also a very effective design technique to use. She also talks about getting into tight spots, okay? And that's something a lot of people struggle with. How do I get, I'm in this spot, how do I get out? So she explains some strategies for doing that. Um, and you can see there's lots of information on here. Um, you can even, one of the things she suggests is you fill in with a smaller motif, maybe a different type of motif. So if you're doing big swirls and you get into a little area, maybe a few little pebbles, because that'll take you in and get you back out again. So really helpful information uh, in that getting out of that tight spot there for sure. Okay, another thing that's interesting is working within a defined area. So that's another uh, thing that quilters will struggle with is what happens when I have this big area or a big block and it just seems overwhelming. Well, you can, you know, work in that area or you can even uh, make that area a little bit smaller with some of your quilting, like kind of divide it up a bit. But she gives you information about how to do that um, in the book as well. Then she goes back, remember we talked about those simple combinations at the beginning of the book. So she goes into that in this first section of the combinations. And she talks about occasional variations, alternating designs. So she breaks it down even more. And so remember I told you, you get to see what it looks like. So you can see here, she tells you what designs she's using and where you can find them in the book. Okay, so for example, these are on page 56 to 59. So if you start here, you can see Fern Grove is what she's talking about here. And she's talking about blending it with Riverbank, okay? How to create it. She'll walk you through that, tells you what it looks like, but you're gonna go into more detail a little further on in the book. Okay, so here's some of the um, ideas I was telling you about. So you can see it's all stitched out here. You can see the two designs she's using and you can see her chart here. So what you could do with these is you could actually make a copy of this, put it in a page protector and take a, um, like a whiteboard marker or erasable pen and you know start following some of these along here so that you get the muscle memory on how to make this design. So basically some these designs are you know, two, maybe three designs put together. Here's another one, ginkgo. So if you want a leaf in here, and the ginkgo leaf is a pretty easy one, pretty forgiving to do. She's got these three lines inside each one to give some more texture because if you didn't put that in, you just had the big leaf, right? It would look a little empty, I think. So that's another nice, really nice design, nice curved lines if you're looking for a curvy line combination pattern. Now we get into some other ones that are a little more complicated. This one's Old Town. You can see that there's about four different designs in here, but these two here, I mean, the circles and the rectangles that she's building on here, they kind of fill in between these other motifs. So they're kind of more like a, almost like a bit of a background to them, I would say, because those aren't what you notice, right? What you notice is the leaves and the circles. You might notice the, the brickwork here. I guess it looks like brickwork to me, but that's a really interesting design, I thought. And then I thought this was really nice too, called Beloved. A little bit more complicated, but none of these are really difficult, okay? None of them are really, really difficult, and they're very organic and flowing. So that always makes them easier, okay? It's not like they have to be just like this. They don't have to be perfect traditional feathers, for example. So very forgiving designs. Uh, you can see how she's echoed these here, two, three echoes here. If you only did two on one, like down here, for example, no one's going to notice it. It looks just fine. So it's easy to fit these designs into different areas because of the options you have with them. I thought this was really cool streams. Okay, so starting out with your wavy lines, and here's an example where you can do the wavy lines and kind of break down that quilt into, into divisions, if you will, and then you can fill in the wavy lines with certain designs. And, you know, these are kind of the alternate, I kind of think of these as the alternate or the backspace in them. And you can fill them in with something totally different. So she's using uh, five different, <coughs> excuse me, patterns here, one of which happens to be the wavy lines. But you've got these uh, growing, you know, leaf, leaf kind of things, clusters, these semicircles. This reminds me of wood, uh, wood print or wood design. And then just kind of some more, you know, wavy lines going in the other direction and then you've got these pebbles. So again, not difficult designs, but really effective and a lot of texture created with this. And you could put anything you wanted, you know, inside those wavy lines, right? That's just some options she's giving you. Then remember we talked about fancy combinations before. So you've got the, so some more, uh, in this particular case, more like uh, feathers, feather kind of look here, spirals in there. Um, you've got some, you know, wavy lines going through there as well. So it looks a little bit more elegant, but again, very organic 
and it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? No one will notice if it's not perfect, right? Perfect dish is good. Here's another one called Spirit. Again, these wavy lines, this is a lot of movement going in here, it creates a lot of dynamic movement in your quilt. But again, simple half, half kind of circles there, uh, pebbles, and all of these designs we're looking at are ones that can be done without breaking your thread. They're continuous line designs. You're gonna be able to move your way across your quilt without having to break thread, which saves you time, which means you can get more quilts done, right? Okay, I thought this was fun. Bubble Town. Okay, <laughs> Bubble Town, right? So you got the big circles with designs in them, just kind of back and forth, kind of S curves or wavy lines, if you want to call them. Some little spirals around to define those, little pebbles in there. So again, simple designs, but when you put them together, they create a really interesting effect. And this is an also, an, also another one that I thought was interesting called Heavens. Okay, so you've got like, looks like planets and the moon and maybe, you know, clouds or you know, I don't know, the Milky Way, something like that. Comets, maybe. Um, stars in there as well. So none of these are difficult. But putting them together like this is really effective. And people are going to look at that and go, oh, look at that. There's a, there's like a planet there. Oh, there's a moon. There's, you know. So this would be really cute on a, um, a kid's quilt, I think. It would be really effective there. I thought it was quite different. And Autumn Wind. I also like this one. Again, lots of movement with those wavy lines going back and forth. Spirals, pebbles. These kind of leaf shape, again, very simple designs, but a very effective combination. I love it when you do things that aren't difficult to do, but they look really complicated when you're done. I think that's always a win. And here's one. This is called Maximalist, okay, because <laughs> there's a lot going on in this one. But you're building on these circles, right? So again, remember how she had the circles with things going on inside them, right? She's doing that, but she's combining a lot of different designs in here. So this would be something you'd want to have on a quilt you know, maybe a whole cloth or something where there's a lot of background where you can show off that quilting because there's a lot happening in that particular design. But again, nothing terribly difficult. And this one, which I think the other one could have been called as well, <laughs> kitchen sink combo, putting things together. Okay, so she has lots of different designs in here. Basically, you could take any of the designs she was talking about earlier, those motifs, those simple motifs, and start combining them together. Come up with your own combinations. Okay, so I think this is something that a lot of people don't think about, is taking these simple designs, combining them together, and creating a whole new design, a whole new look. So if you're already into free motion quilting and you're looking for some new motifs, some ways to combine motifs, I highly recommend you take a look at Free Motion Combinations by Christina Camelli. Remember to check up above or down in the description below for a link to this book that you can have a more look, a detailed look at it or even get your own copy. Thanks so much for watching today. Please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.